Hi, this is Zach, and I've decided to do a quick video to answer some of the questions that I've received through YouTube with people seeing my use of the 808 number 16 camera version 2 on both my plane and my tricopter. The two questions I'll be answering are how do you connect your keychain camera to a video transmitter such as the Fat Shark or Immersion RC uh, 5.8 gig transmitters? And the second part is how do I reduce vibration on the plane and uh, more specifically the tricopter um, with the keychain cameras. Now for the purposes of this video I'm going to talk mostly about the uh, connecting up the Mobius camera which is the updated 1080p version of the 808. Um, this is a, a newer and a much sharper camera. Um, the wiring is a little bit different that you get for it but uh, for all intents and purposes, the technique used to do the wiring is the same between the two cameras. So the first question was, how do you hook up a keychain camera to a video transmitter? The main things to take note of are the order of the pins on the video transmitter. So in the case of Fat Shark and Immersion RC, you've got plus 5 volts output along the bottom, which can provide power to your camera if you wish, then ground and then video in. I'm not going to worry about the audio left and right because I don't really care about listening to the sound of wind rushing through uh, while I've got my goggles on so uh, I'm not going to connect the, the audio plugs at all. Then of course up the top you've got your ground and battery, the, um, uh, the two cell or three cell uh, input um, and usually with the, uh, the Fat Shark or an immersion IC um, transmitters they recommend that you use some sort of a balance filter uh, to input the power um, uh, and that just has a plug that clips in and stays in. So back to the cable. The cable set you get with the Mobius, uh, you actually have to order in as an extra $5 cable, uh, whereas the 808 does actually come with a cable set. You need to take note of the colours of the cables and the labels on the cables. So plus 5 volt input for the camera to be powered and even uh, to charge the internal battery while it's plugged into a USB power supply is the red cable. That's quite standard. And the black cable is a common ground and it's the same ground uh, on all black cables throughout the three cables. Video out in the case of the Mobius is a yellow cable or in the case of the 808 camera excuse me while I try to extract the cable is actually a white cable labeled video out. So pay attention to the color coding of the cable you're using for your camera. And the Mobius has an audio output as well, which is not a live streaming audio. It's only an audio output when you play back videos from the camera, uh, which the Mobius can do, but the 808 cannot. As I said earlier though, I'm not going to worry about connecting audio because I don't really need an audio um, throughput on the, through the video transmitter. So now that we know what uh, the colours mean, I'm going to go ahead and unplug all of these connectors. So what we're left with are three plugs on the Mobius, or on the 808 you'll have two plugs. And all we're really interested in is three of these cables. Our yellow video, our black ground and our red power. And the easiest way to do this is to just rearrange the cables within these servo connector plugs as they are. So I'm deciding to use the existing video cable and we need ground in the middle which corresponds with the video transmitter having video then ground then the red plus 5 volt. So using the smallest flathead screwdriver I've got I'm going to very carefully pry the plastic tab off the servo connector. Just try not to break or bend it too much, just enough to slide the cable out. And I'm now going to insert it into the middle because on the video transmitter it does sit right next to the video cable. Now I need the plus 5 volt cable in next to the ground, so I'm going to take it out of the other servo connector very carefully again, prying it out of the connector and inserting it into the plug I'm going to use. 
Now you don't have to use a three pin servo plug. If you do have a, uh, a proper um, plug that can clip into the transmitter, which is in this case a five pin, then please go ahead and use that because you'll get a more secure connection. However, for all intents and purposes, this is finished. You have video, ground and five volts. The pins on here are exactly the same as a servo plug. That is now ready to go. I can plug that into my camera, which will power the camera. The video out will come into the video transmitter. And as long as I've powered it up, I will get a signal onto the goggles. That's about as simple as it gets. Now to tidy up, you can either try to isolate these cables, chop them off, whatever you like. But while I'm still testing to make sure my connections are good, I'm just going to get rid of one of these plugs and just chuck that other cable into the remaining servo plug that I'll leave for now, but we'll get rid of in time. And all you need to do is either just ignore it or tape it to the cable like so, and you're pretty much done. So the second question was, how do I mount these keychain cameras onto my aircraft in a way that minimizes vibration? The way I've found that works on both the tricopter and the Bixler that I fly is to layer different foams together to basically dampen the vibration. And this is the mount I'm currently using on both aircraft. As you can see, there's a layer of Velcro on both ends. You've got uh, the hook and the loop. Then you've got the black foam, which is a very dense foam you can buy in big sheets from Hobby King. They're very cheap, self-adhesive on both sides, very dense, not very pliable, but it certainly is enough to provide support to the camera and absorb some of the vibrations coming through. In between, as you can see, I've got a much softer foam that can squish. It's kind of like you know, earplug material. It's, it's quite pliable. And all that is, is the gyro mounting foam pads that you can get also off Hubby King or other websites. And it's very soft and squishy. And it works well to dampen vibrations through the middle of your mount. So that's all it is. Velcro on both ends, two different types of foam. Camera just plonks onto the top of that, like so. And that's all I'd have sitting on top of the nose on the Bixler. Now on the tricopter, I've gone one extra step. Using a spare bit of plywood from an old Bixler uh, canopy kit, I've put another layer of that dense foam underneath and some more Velcro. I can then Velcro it to the front of my tricopter like so, more or less straight. And that, between the Velcro and the actual foam pad, just gives that little bit of vibration dampening to this platform. And on top of that, of course, I've got my foam sandwich, which can go right up the front and that is enough to absorb most of the vibrations coming from the motors and the props. Keep in mind, of course, that the main way to reduce vibrations in any aircraft is to properly balance your props and also your motor. That's all you'll get from me for now. Thanks for watching.